Welcome back to Investor Intel. Today we have the privilege of Enthusiast Gaming, an esports company. Joining us is its president, Manosh. Hi, Peter. Nice to meet you. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Doing very well. I'm excited to talk well, about esports. And the company is doing extremely well as yes. well. Yes. Esports took in more dollars than the box office in Hollywood last year, didn't it? That's right. Gaming is uh, over a $150 billion industry right now. Um, and that's happened all over the past 10 years. So when you look at growth industries and you look at yep. scale, this is it. And we're not talking about people playing in their basement, uh, League of Legends back and forth. We're talking large institutions, filling arenas, filling movie theaters for the purpose of watching and participating in esports. Exactly. So which one of the various silos in the industry is enthusiast in? Um, so I bucket things into four categories. There are teams, okay. team ba teams. Um, right. There are events. Uh, there are the game publishers who make the games that other people play. And then there are platforms, uh, you know, the online platforms such as right. Twitch and Discord. Uh, let's, we are let's leave the platforms to the side for a second. The other three have parallels in many other industries. Yep. So the gaming is the it's the real content. It's like baseball or or football or any other sport you like to watch. Yes. So we actually play in multiple. We don't make the game. That's for sure not part of it. But we have the teams, the events, and the platform. And the biggest money maker is the platform, because you could um, you know your team is wherever they go, uh, wherever they right. win the tournaments. The events are wherever they're physically located. But online, we reach over 200 million gamers. So. Um, that provides right. a lot of the scale. So let's save the platform for later because that's the, sure. possibly the most complicated part. The content is easy. Yep. You have athletes, you have teams, they compete, they win. And yep. I can sit on my couch and watch ABC on a Tuesday afternoon and watch one of these events live. I can go to my movie theater or I can pay money like WWE or um, Mixed Martial Arts and go see an event live. Yes, and, and after the players compete, and they gain notoriety, they then go on to uh, live stream at home and build personal relationships with their audience, which is something that's harder to do if, let's say, you're Kobe Bryant, you know, right. you're going to live stream a gym. Over here, you're live streaming, talking directly with an audience, and there are 700 million people now watching gaming esports content online, and that's a huge part of our business okay. as well. Okay, that's one-tenth of the world's population. You, you sure you have that number right? Yes, that is a, a new zoo number. And Netflix said to their shareholders that their biggest competitor right now is not an HBO Go or another streaming platform. Rather, it's all the people on YouTube and on Twitch watching other people play games. That's a stunning amount of money. Um, if I remember correctly, the gaming industry last year was about 150 billion US dollars of total uh, GDP. Yeah, correct. And that's global. Yeah. And there was actually, if you look back into the 90s, there was about 100 million gamers in the world because there wasn't a lot of internet yet. And most games were played either on your local home PC or they were played by yourself or right. they were played um, on your living room couch. Nowadays, um, according to Nuzu, there's over 2 billion people who play games. Granted, a billion of those are playing it on their smartphones, whether it's Candy Crush or something else. But there's another right. bill billion or so who are playing you know, 70% of North American um, homes have gaming consoles in them or a PC. So gaming is is now uh, far surpassed film and TV as the predominant form of entertainment. And it's not that you, people are doing it at home. We have these cafes where people like to have a cheeseburger, have a beer, engage in gaming, engage in the social side of the industry. Yeah, people are even sneaking at work and doing it, you know, when, they're, when their bosses aren't watching, they'll quickly grab in a game of something. And then when they're on their bus, on the bus or the subway, they'll do it on their phones. They're always, we're always connected to the internet on some form of device nowadays, and there's games on every right. device. So you're not a game, uh, enthusiast is not a publisher. You do own teams. Um, and let's talk about the platforms now. Yeah. You need to have channels for distribution. In the good old days, it was newspaper. Then it was radio. Then we had that Marvel called TV. And these are all different platforms. Yep. Within the internet, there are a variety of platforms available. And which one of those platforms are you currently on? 
So we are we are on our own platform. Uh, we are also, of course, on social media and YouTube and whatnot. But like you mentioned, I think that's a good analogy. If you know, in the, when you had the New York Times, you're essentially getting a journalist who has high credentials, who's coming in. And nowadays, with social media and YouTube um, and blogging and media platforms that are independent, we've had a, a mass plethora of um, just people who are experts, right? They've built up an expertise right. somehow from their careers or, or or anywhere else. And now they could publish onto YouTube or they could make their own blog or they could join an independent media company. So so the ability to have expert content creators has exploded. And that's why you have people on YouTube. So our communities that we, we have about 120 gaming communities, each dedicated to different types of games where okay. it's, um, I would say the majority of these content creators are self-made content creators, where it's community-created content, where we have moderators, senior editors who come and kind of find the cream of, of the crop, that you know it, it floats to the top, and, and we help incentivize them through rev shares and monetization. But really, that's maybe you know a small fraction of the overall communities who are who are on our platforms, talking, creating content, commenting, debating, consuming content. So. Um, they're kind of like Facebook, but for gamers. Um, right. The thing is, Facebook is kind of a catch-all versus here, gamers want to be with people who love what they love, whether it's okay. Pokemon so, or at, esports. At heart, at heart, I'm a capitalist. I want to know how you make money off people chatting, off bloggers writing about you. How yep. does enthusiast make money and make money for its shareholders? So currently, the we have multiple revenue streams. Our lowest hanging fruit for our revenue streams is that we have over a billion page views a month across uh, on online. Right. Uh, we serve about we we get about a thirty billion ad requests a month, and um, we monetize those. Uh, we started off, you know, five five years ago is in a basement with two people. Now we have two hundred fifty people around the, around multiple offices, um, and we've started to build technology to serve the ads and, and find those who are looking specifically for a gaming audience. So advertisers right. are key. Uh, that brought in, about, brought in about $18 million of our revenue this past year. Uh, but then we also have about 3 to $4 million coming in through subscribers uh, who pay about 4 bucks a month. So we have about 75,000 subscribers monthly. How, uh, sticky are those, how sticky are those subscribers? Is there a lot of churn? Or once they're on, they're on forever? Um, so it is a relatively new thing, this subscription offering, and we are actually only offering it to a small percentage of our user base because we wanted to test okay. it out. So, okay. uh, last year we were about 50,000 subscribers and now we're at about 75,000. Um, and, and we keep on expanding it to additional communities of ours, but right now it's primarily on one or two of our larger communities. So we'll okay. see as that becomes a, more of a priority. We also have, um, uh, Canada's largest gaming convention, um, which brings in about one and a half million dollars, and we're looking to expand that to, to new cities now. Okay. Um, and, and then what's there's that, what's that convention called? EGLX, which is the and same when, as the ticker. When, when is it going to be held this year? October 18th to 20th. Everybody who's watching, go buy a ticket. I'll see you there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And what's your um, other revenue stream then? And the last one is um, from the esports teams. We also have sponsorships and merchandise. So those are team specific. Uh, so there's no media involved in in the right. team sponsorships. It's more like the logos on the jerseys and the apparel. So it's no different from me going to buy a Manchester United jersey. Exactly. Yes. And I can wear my wear my team with pride. Yeah. Yep. You mentioned earlier your symbol. Which stock exchange do you trade on? So currently we trade on the Toronto Stock Exchange um, for yeah, the ticker is EV. The Venture Sorry. Exchange, not TMX. So we we actually earlier this month were approved for the TS, for TMX, the, the main board, the big board. So we're going to be one of the 1% of companies that graduate from the Venture Exchange to the big board uh, this month. Yeah, that's a fantastic success story to date. Can yeah, we check back exciting. in with you? In a, we'll check back in with you in a couple of months for an update. Absolutely. Yes. We're also on the OTC. Okay. I will see you in October. Thank you very much, Peter. Enthusiast Gaming from Investor Intel. Thank you all.